Item number, SCP-6334, Level 1 Unrestricted, Containment Class, Euclid, Disruption Class, Vlam, Risk Class, Notice. Special Containment Procedures, Current containment efforts are focused on locating any potential remaining instances of SCP-6334 and to uncover possible sources of SCP-6334. As of now, SCP-6334 instances appear to be incapable of survival in containment, rendering captured instances effectively self-neutralizing. The remains of current and future instances of SCP-6334 are to be stored in a standard object locker in the light containment wing of Site-14 in the event that further autopsy or research is required. Description. SCP-6334 refers to an unknown number of small mammals, such as cats, squirrels, and dogs, entirely composed out of waste materials such as scrap metal, cardboard, and glass. Instances behave identically to their non-anomalous counterparts, though lack all typical biological functions. Despite this, SCP-6334 instances do require sustenance in the form of an ever-changing diet of different objects, including paper, stone, gemstones, etc. SCP-6334 instances are incapable of searching for food independently and entirely rely on humans for survival. Instances are believed to have minor telepathic abilities in order to communicate their current requirements for food. Information on SCP-6334 is minimal, as the only recovered instance expired after two days in containment. Extensive records, however, were recorded in a journal confiscated from the only known owner of an SCP-6334 instance. See Recovered Log 6334-A. Access File Recovered Log 6334-A Logs recovered from a small hardback journal found within a double-locked cabinet in the apartment of Alan Hunt found to possess an SCP-6334 instance prior to Foundation intervention. Irrelevant entries have been removed for brevity. Some weird shit is going on. I'm glad I've already got this journal or else I'd need to get a new one, because I need to write about this. I went on my walk through 39th, and as usual I went off course and got distracted by another path. I don't think I've ever gone... Uh, on topic, uh, way too hot out for any normal wildlife to be going around. I think I saw a squirrel here or there, but whatever animals I've seen before were probably hiding in trees or something. I don't really know if I'd call it an alley or a small road. It ran behind the Safeway, so I guess it was for shipping or garbage or something like that. Not sure. Smelled terrible, not that I really minded. The view was kind of interesting, and I ended up seeing a lot of new things I hadn't looked at before. Those things were garage doors and marked parking spaces, but still interesting nonetheless. And then I saw something move. I had no clue what it was. For a second I thought it was a stray or something, maybe an oversized squirrel, but not normal. It was whining like a dog, but made of… metal? Something like this. Below is a small sketch of an SCP-6334 instance, resembling a golden retriever breed of Canis lupus familiaris. Made entirely of trash, garbage, metal, glass, I think I even saw some paperwork on the damn thing. And it looked exactly like Chip. I can't explain why, and Chip's eyes weren't made of glass, but something about it just looked the same. I just… I don't know. And then it rushed me. I screamed, pretty loudly, but I guess I'm glad nobody heard me, as now it's sitting in the dog cage behind me. Alright, it's been a bit, and I think I've got a handle on this thing. It's acting just like a dog. It sounds just like a dog, somehow. But it's not a dog, I think. I still have some of Chip's old supplies, dog stuff, to use for this thing, as it seems to like it. It's already used to me, trying to play, I think, and uh, coming up. Doesn't seem scared at all for just being found by a stranger. I'd send it to a rescue shelter, but I don't know what they're gonna do with the thing. I don't really know if I need to feed it. I, I tried giving it fresh kibble I had laying around and it didn't seem interested, didn't even seem to notice it. I improvised and gave it access to my waste basket, just on a hunch, and that seemed to do the trick. I can barely tell where its mouth was, but it seemed to like it, so at least it's not gonna starve. If that was even a possibility in the first place. 
I grabbed Chip's leash off the wall because I thought I was going to take him on a walk. I'm such a fucking idiot. I think he asked me for money today. I'm not sure, but I glanced over it and somehow I just... knew. Trash wouldn't work anymore, I think. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. This is magic, after all, I think. I got a dollar, rolled it up, and put it in the trash bin and waited. It took some time, but eventually it came over, ignored the trash, and went for the bill. If that keeps up, I'm not sure how sustainable it is, but at least it seems sated for now. I came back home and I heard crying coming from the other room, so I rushed to check if he was okay, and I'm not really sure. I swear it shrunk, at least a little. And fuck, it looked so sad. Curled up and sobbing. No tears, but it's the most terrible sound. People who say the brain reacts most to a crying baby are wrong. I panicked and rushed to grab my wallet. That seemed to do the trick. It still hasn't grown back yet, but at least it calmed down. He pounced me, tail wagging and all, afterwards, but I'm not sure what to think. This whole thing has my head fucked, and I just don't know how to react. I didn't check. Shit, 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 shit. Okay, uh, so it started talking again, it sort of. I don't know how to describe it. I know what it needed or something. A speed limit sign. That's so specific and I guess it just wants to eat the metal? Was eating half the trash can not enough? I thought of making an improvised one or building something, but I just don't think that'll work. This is fucking insane and I just don't think I can do it. No matter how much it cries. It worked. I gave it the sign and it grew back to its normal size. Thank fuck. I took him out for a walk tonight, right when it got too dark for people to get a glance of him. Secret or not, keeping a dog indoors at all times is not okay, and I'm trying my best to help him feel better. He just looks so sad all the time. Even without eyes, I can just feel it looking at him. I feel like we have a mutual understanding. It can tell I've been through a lot, and I can tell it's been through a lot, and now we're both surviving together. It feels nice to have a partner by my side again. He's there for me. Photos. Now it wants photos. That's not too bad, and at least it's not vandalism this time. I couldn't find any laying around, so I gave it my phone. I wasn't sure if it would wipe the photos from it or just eat it, but I trust him not to do more than he's asking. It did eat my phone. I can't be mad, he didn't know what he was doing. It's just a dog after all. The next four pages have been torn out of the journal. The ring. The ring I bought for Jesse. It wants, needs, the ring. I nearly got evicted for missing rent with the amount I spent on it. I should have thrown it away or sold it back like they suggested, so I'm at a loss. I can't let him die. I can't hear that crying again. It's not like she'd need it anyway. Anymore, at least. He needed something again, and I gave it to him. I love him so much, and I'm so happy I was given the opportunity to be here for him. The Foundation was informed of the existence of SCP-6334 after several sightings of a metallic creature were reported to the local police department. Embedded Foundation agents began an investigation and a cover-up was performed following standard protocol. On September 15, 2016, two plainclothes MTF agents were sent to retrieve SCP-6334. See Recovery Log. Access File. Recovery Log. Footage taken from the body camera of Agent Fielder, alongside Agent Stevens, transcribed. Both were instructed to sedate and perform on-site amnestic treatment to Alan Hunt before retrieving SCP-6334. Begin Log Time is 9pm. Both agents enter apartment through back door after remote scans show a lack of security cameras. Agents proceed to search apartment for approximately one minute before a faint voice can be heard from behind a door. Agent Fielder holds up his arm, and both stop. Good boy. Good boy. Huh? No, 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 no. Not now. I just fed you. I don't have enough of that. Come on, please. I don't know if I can. Alan pauses, before footsteps can be heard from behind the door. Both agents step backwards, however, are unable to hide before the door is opened. What the fuck? Holy shit! Agent Fielder raises his weapon, loaded with non-lethal ammunition. Quiet. We're not here to hurt you. 
We just need you to calm down, we'll explain. Not here to hurt me, Th then put the fucking gun away! Alan takes several steps back and attempts to shut the door. However, Stevens blocks off the doorway, preventing it from shutting. Alan rushes to the back of the room and briefly glances at the SCP-6334 instance before rushing to grab it and tripping into the ground. Fuck. If this was a robbery, I'd be dead by now. You guys are probably after him. Get the fuck away from him. I won't let you take Chip. Please calm down. We aren't going to hurt you or the dog. Agent Fielder lowers his weapon and holds one hand up, approaching Alan slowly. No, get the fuck away from him! Alan lunges at Fielder, but is quickly incapacitated and rendered unconscious via several rounds from Steven's weapon. After confirming Alan's medical stability, a thorough search of his apartment is performed, resulting in the location of a journal containing relevant information to SCP-6334. Several photos of a golden retriever are found partially burned in a trash can. Amnestic treatment is administered. End log. Thank you guys so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to level 4 patrons Lesby Friends, Alexis the Great, Everborn, and Joe Light. And a huge shout out to level 5 patron Doomsday LLC Prints and Design, and level 6 patron Totally Not a Femboy. If you would like to see your name at the end of my videos, see my videos early, and get some other cool perks, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description.